Hey guys, it's Rob, and welcome to the Dodger Download. And now it's time for Dodger Baseball. So it's been two days since pitchers and catchers reported to spring training, so I figured it'd be the perfect time to talk about our bullpen. You know, a couple of days ago, I did a piece on our starter rotation, how I think it has a chance to be a stable of aces. But going into this year, I also think our bullpen has the chance to be a lights-out bullpen. Every year, a consistent question that dominates spring training is how's our bullpen? What's our bullpen look like? This year, though, I think it's the first year in a long time that we can finally say that our bullpen is in perfect shape. First things first, there is a new rule that went into effect this year and will be implemented where a relief pitcher coming into a game has to face a minimum of three batters unless he finishes a half inning. So that's going to change strategy, how a bullpen's used, loogies, you know, the lefty specialists, um, those, those guys are going to have a hard time sticking around in the game. You know, you're going to need lefties and righties to be able to get out lefties and righties. So that being said, you know, last year, 2019, the 2019 Dodgers had the fourth best ERA in all of baseball, but also held batters to a 220 average, which was good for number two in all of baseball. So the Mattingly days, you know, the rickety bridge to get to Jansen, uh, those days are over. You know, we've been spoiled with Friedman. Year after year, he puts together a solid bullpen with some better than others. But I think this, honestly, is probably going to be his best work yet. Now we have too many good options that some options are going to end up starting in AAA. Of those options, May and Gonsolin are most likely going to start in AAA. Now, it's for a good reason. So, you know, let's not bring out the pitch force just yet. Um, but, you know, ultimately, it's going to help them fine-tune. Help them get their fastball right. Help them get their off-speed pitches right before they come up to the big league club and impact Major League Baseball games. You know, also, the second factor for it is it's going to be able to keep their innings to a nice limit. You know, we want to keep the kids healthy and being able to kind of unleash them and go into our deep postseason run leading all the way up to the World Series is going to be crucial. So making sure that they're able to help us all season long once we're able to call them up is going to be a big deal as well. Also, I think Ferguson ends up being our only lefty in the bullpen. You know, 2019 wasn't his year. You know, he had a rough time trying to repeat his 2018 where he came up. He had a real hard time throwing his curveball for strikes. You know, and, and because of that, batters were able to just sit on his fastball and tee off. So going into 2020, I think he's going to take a step forward and kind of go back to that 2018 version and really be a big anchor of our bullpen again. The newly acquired Nelson, I think, ultimately lands in the bullpen, you know, where his stuff will play up. You know, he's also coming off of an injury, so we want to make sure we get him right. And then we also have an option on him for next year. So who knows what happens next year? And finally, Joe Kelly, my man. You know, I think he's my bounce back candidate for the bullpen. You know, ultimately, his numbers painted a far worse picture than he actually was last year. Yeah, he had some moments of, you know, hard to watch, but he also dominated in moments as well. You know, he's got some filthy stuff where a two-seamer that just runs off the plate. You know, he's got a Bud's Bunny changeup, and he's got a nasty curveball as well. I just honestly think he tried to make too hard to make a good impression. Also, I think we put him in bad spots, you know, multi-inning um, efforts. You know, um, I think for him, it's he's got so much movement on his stuff that he has a hard time kind of getting control of it. So once he has control of it, and then he goes out for a half inning, and then trying to bring him back in, you know, he has a hard time getting back to that. So I think overall his numbers were a little worse than he actually was. And I think going into this year, I think we kind of figure out how to use him and he's going to be ready to come out uh, guns blazing uh, day one. Now going into the year, I think Trinan and Jansen are going to be co-closers with the latter getting the majority of the snaps at the closing opportunities. You know, I have faith in Jansen. You know, he spent all offseason working with driveline baseball to rework his cutter, to try to get the movement back on it so he stops serving meatballs over the plate. You know, he had some, some, some tough times last year, but he also flashed some moments of dominance as well. You know, he really had some times where that cutter looked like the old Kenley Jansen of, of old, but then, like I said, there were some times where, you know, he's throwing meatballs over the plate. So hopefully going into this year, you know, we get a bounce back performance from him. You know, I have faith in him, but worst case scenario, we do have in-house insurance. Of those options of in-house insurance, the first option would be Trinan. You know, he was an all-star in 2018 where he put up one of the best seasons uh, in all of baseball, you know, with a .78 ERA, and he held batters to a 1.58 average, which is insane. So he had a 
rough 2019, but if we can get any version of the 2018 Trinan, you know, then that's a guy that can close any day of the week for us. Uh, and that gives us just another option towards the back end of our bullpen to be able to really dominate. So, like I said, I have faith going into the year that Jensen's going to be the guy, and then Trinan is able to be a co co ace or a co closer, you know, to be able to really lock up the end of our bullpen. We also have Urias. Which, like I said, though, I, I'd like to be able to get him in the starting rotation this year. You know, he's been a phenom prospect with us for a long time. You know, he was injured. He had a year last year in the bullpen to be able to really just kind of get back to himself. You know, let's let's put him in the rotation where we where we where we really want him to be. You know, let's give him that opportunity to be the guy that we always envisioned him to be for us. So I think ultimately we want to keep him in the starting rotation unless, I mean, worst case scenario, he can close for us because he has the stuff to be able to play up. He has a really good fastball, four different pitches to be able to use, um, and he really has no problem being able to be under the under the bid, you know, under the bright lights and uh, in the bid moments. And last but not least, Gratterall. Now, while everybody was talking Mookie Betts and David Price, Gratterall was a huge addition to our team and an underrated acquisition that nobody's really talking about. The number 83 prospect in all of baseball has a 100 mile an hour sinker that can top out at 102 miles an hour, just disappears off the plate. You know, 100 miles an hour should not move like that. But then he bats it up with an 89, 90 mile an hour slider. Looks like a Frisbee is throwing out there. So you got to worry about a 90 mile an hour slider and a 102 mile an hour sinker sitting off the plate. Good luck. You know, so he's our closer. Uh, once Kenley Jansen is done with us or once we kind of decide to move him down into maybe a setup role, you know, Gratterall is our closer of the future. He has that confident swag to be able to be a closer. You know, not arrogant, not cocky, just a swag about him where he's able to come out. He knows he's got good stuff, and he comes out and he throws strikes. So what do you guys think about our bullpen this year? Like I said, in the past five years or so, I think this is the one offseason where I'm not worried about our bullpen at all. I think that whatever options we do decide with are going to be lights out for us. And I think, honestly, this has the chance to be one of our best bullpens in the most recent memory. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my channel, like I said, subscribe to my channel. Give me a follow on Instagram at the Dodger Download. And until the next time, guys, see you on the Download.